The Connors are back with a new episode. It's New Pipes and Old Secrets. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my Connors review for episode 13 of season 5. We're, uh, I think, more than halfway through. I believe there's 22 episodes uh, this season. But New Pipes and Old Secrets is uh, the name of it. And uh, if you are new around here to Dan Reviews It, well, thank you for checking out this video. We do uh, Connors Reviews every single week here. Uh, well, every week that there's a new episode, I should say. And we even have the old uh, Roseanne Seasons uh, that I've reviewed sort of as a whole thing. But uh, episode by episode, we go through the Connors and have been uh, since the beginning, really, of the of the reboot. So check out the, that stuff if you have not. And uh, think about subscribing down below there. So, all right, let's uh, talk about this episode. I think, you know, a little spoiler for my grade here. Uh, I think this could be uh, one of the best, if not the best, of the season so far. Um, so let's sort of just dive into uh, the different topics. So in terms of, we always talk about the cast that is missing, and Mary uh, was not in this episode, of course. Um, you know, we, we see her so infrequently, so she was out, and uh, I don't, Oh, yes, Harris, you know what, Harris was in, I think, the opening scenes. We saw her briefly, um, but everybody else uh, was in it at least a little bit that is uh, part of the regular cast. We didn't see Katie Seagal as Louise. We didn't see uh, Neville, but everybody in uh, the, the the main cast, uh, other than Mary, was here. Um, special guest star, Estelle Parsons, we should say that uh, first, because that's huge. I, we uh, saw her... A little bit ago, it was earlier in this season, um, I forget how long back, but um, when we found out that she has dementia and, uh, you know, that was a really interesting episode uh, with, with Jackie learning about that and stuff. Um, I honestly, I wasn't sure if we'd see her again, but uh, I think last season we did not see her at all, if I'm remembering that correctly, season four. Um or and they, there was one episode where we saw her briefly, but it was like over FaceTime, uh, and Mark was talking to her. That might have been last season, but in any event, doesn't much matter. Um, but to see her again in this season is is great, and she's got um, a, a really sort of you know meaty storyline here. Um, we'll actually get to that second because that's part of the old secrets uh, part of the title. But the whole theme really of this episode is um, about elder care and uh, caring for our parents in the various sort of uh, ways that that takes shape. Um, and so the new pipes portion uh, has to do with the pipes at uh, Darlene, Ben, and Becky's new house. They have been uh, not put in the best, or maybe Dan did not use the best kind of piping or whatever, but they make these horrible noises. So, uh, you know, Dan says, okay, you know, I'll, I'll come and fix it, you know. We'll figure it out. But um, he's got all of these social plans because Louise is gone. So he says, oh, I can come in and fix it, but only after, you know, my bowling night with Chuck. So uh, why don't I, I get a key? Um, Darlene did not seem to want to give him a key, which, I mean, I guess my parents don't have a key to my place, but they also live two hours away. So why would they need one? Um, so I, I don't know. I thought that was mildly odd, I guess. But whatever. Darlene's been a little bit... Uh, let's say, quirky this season, um, you know, if not downright um, rude and, uh, you know, her character has not been going in great ways, but it, she was actually real good this episode, um, you know, so I'll, I'll give it to her for that. But, uh, but in any event, he ends up falling asleep on the couch, Dan does, and she comes down and, and is like, you know, you didn't fix anything, like, what, what are we doing? And he's like, oh, well, the job's more complicated than I thought, I'm going to have to keep coming back. So he comes over night after night, continues to fall asleep on the couch um, without repairing uh, the, the pipes. So Darlene is like, you know, Mark uh, found him eating donuts and fried chicken for breakfast the other day. He's, you know, just sleeping all the time at, you know, weird hours. He's not fixing anything. Um, you know, what's going on with dad? Let's figure it out. So her and Ben and um, Becky decide to do sort of a little bit of an intervention. Uh, and, and they called it an ambush uh, at the house. And so 
Darlene calls him. He pretends like he's at a casino and he's doing really well at blackjack. Really, he's just in the garage at the old house. And then, you know, comes into the kitchen and sees them all there. And, um, you know, the joke is, oh, I see some people I know. I got to go. Um, so he gets real defensive. But as it turns out, he's having sleeping issues because he is worried about the kids and their health and whether or not they're going to die at some point. Um, you know, which we thought maybe, oh, you're just missing Louise. She's out on the road. Um, but he says, no, she came home, you know, for a few days, uh, the other week, but I still couldn't sleep. Um, and it harkens back to Roseanne. Roseanne, you know, passed suddenly and, and this and that. I, I, I just, I, and I say this all the time, I know, but I love that they are still mentioning Roseanne. A, a normal family would do that. You know, I hate these shows where somebody dies and then you never hear their name again. You know, I, I'm going through the old episodes of Cheers and um, in season five right now, which is two years after Nicholas uh, Colasanto died. And they've mentioned Coach, you know, a few times, sprinkled in. Um, and I'm like, that. yes, that makes sense. That's what people do. Um, you don't just pretend like they never existed. So I, I love that. Um, but, he, you know, he's he's worried now that uh, his kids are going to suffer, you know, some other fate or something. He's going to not be able to help them basically when they need him now that they have moved out of the house. Um, so I think that that makes sense for the character. He has always been, you know, super nurturing. It's why he is one of the all-time great TV dads, um, I, you know, I mean, he, he might be the, the best of the TV dads, you know, um, I, I, there's a, there's a few others obviously in the mix, but, um, I, I just, I, he's so great. Um, but he's always been caring and nurturing. And so that makes sense, uh, for his character. So, um, you know, I, I don't know how they necessarily resolved that. He sort of joked that, uh, one of them would have to sleep on the couch at the old house until, you know, he, he feels better about everything, but, you know, I don't think that's really uh, going to happen, but uh, I, I like that they sort of, you know, came out with that because that obviously is, um, you know, a, a huge part of having these kids in your life for 50 plus, you know, 40, 50 years. And then all of a sudden, you know, if, if they're out and the house is very quiet, you know, whether Louise is there or not, it's going to be a lot quieter than when everybody else was there. Although I do think Harris is still living there. They, they sort of fluctuate with that, but I think Harris is still living there. Uh, but anyway, all right, so on to the old secrets portion of the episode. This is with Estelle Parsons, of course, as uh, Grandma Bev, Jackie and Roseanne's mother, and uh, it's about getting her some care for her dementia. She, uh, you know, has all of these uh, issues with not knowing where she is now, and, uh, you know, sometimes she'll just walk out into the, the middle of the road and whatever, so they are looking for a home care nurse, of course, they are very expensive. And, uh, you know, nobody in this family really has that kind of money. Jackie, uh, you know, mentioned she might have to take out uh, a lien on the on the restaurant or second mortgage or, or whatever. Um, so uh, Darlene finds one that will work with Bev. You know, they have an earlier one in the episode who just couldn't do it anymore. She was the, the only option they could afford, but, you know, Beverly was too cruel to her, and blah, blah, blah. She quits after one day. Okay. So uh, Darlene finds a um, very suitable replacement, but a very expensive one at that. Uh, so they interview her and she says, look, you know, test me out for a week. If you like the results, you know, you keep me on. Um, you know, but Jackie's not shy about her sort of hatred for her mother. Um, and so, you know, uh, we, we have that sort of whole thing of like, well, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily want her to get better. You know, you're not making, you're not, you know, sweetening the deal here. Um, but uh, we have sort of towards the end of the episode, Beverly and the, the home health care nurse come into the restaurant. Basically, the week is up and we're going to see what we want to do now moving forward. Um, but all the while we discover that um, Bev has this uh, arm that has not healed um, correctly from decades and decades ago. Um, the the healthcare nurse uh, figures this out. And so we, we have these hospital records, whatever. And Jackie starts questioning her about it. And Bev doesn't really want to answer. She's lucid, though. She's not going through, uh, you know, one of her dementia spells. She's lucid, but she doesn't want to answer. Um, so I, I sort of, I think I got there before Jackie as the character did. Um, but it was uh, because it was her husband, Jackie's father, 
that actually broke the arm in the first place. And uh, so he wouldn't take her to the hospital and this and that. Now, the part I didn't really see coming is that uh, the reason that happened is because Bev uh, was trying to stop him from hitting Roseanne and Jackie. Um, whew, it's, it's getting me a little bit uh, choked up thinking about it. Um, you know, that's always been sort of a, a soft through line uh, for this entire series, dating back to the probably season, what, three maybe of Roseanne, um, when he passes away, um, and, and we, maybe we found out a little earlier through some other things, but, um, you know, the, the reconciliation of, okay, well, he was kind of a monster, um, but he was still our dad, but he hit us, and, um, but, oh, it was the, you know, it was the era people got hit, oh, but not like this, um, I, you know, those, those episodes remain, um, you know, just, just tattooed in my mind really about, um, you know, how serious that was. And, and really it was, it was one of the early examples to me as a TV watcher, um, you know, cause I was only maybe 11 or 12 or something, um, of, of how well you could really do the comedy drama mix and take a very serious subject, but still have some laughs within it. It certainly formed my, I think, sense of humor, uh, throughout my whole life, you know, um, every, every situation, uh, that I'm in, I sort of do kind of go to the, the humor well, um, to, to get me by. And, and I, I think a good part of that is from Roseanne. So, um, so anyway, we learned about that. Jackie is, uh, is floored by this because obviously, you know, her, her mother has been, you know, not, not maybe the best, but, um, Jackie realizes in that moment, oh my God, you know, you, you, you know, took, took a bullet for us basically, you know, in so many words. Um, and so they hug and everything. And, so uh, she says to the home health care nurse, you know what, L let's do it, you know, let's keep it going um, because now I love my mother kind of thing. Um, yeah, it was it was a very powerful episode. Um, and, you know, and I hate to only give the, the super high grades to the more dramatic episodes, um, but this had a lot of comedy too. It, it has that wonderful mix. You know, you could have an episode that's very funny, um, but that's just one of many, um, you know, and you could have an episode that's very dramatic, although the Connors never, I think, leans too heavily into that. Even, well, the school shooting one last season certainly was, uh, you know, very dramatic, but it, even that, we had, a, you know, a, fleet, a few laughs throughout, um, and I did grade that the highest episode of last season. So again, you know, okay, am I, you know, all these dramatic episodes, am I grading them higher? Yeah, maybe, because I, I think it's harder to get that mix uh, of, you know, intense drama and, you know, side-splitting comedy, um, I, you know, and, and we go through the episodes here all the time here on my reviews, but, you know, back in the day when, uh, when Fisher was beating up Jackie, you know, that was one of the great episodes because it was so funny, but obviously, uh, you know, it just was horrifying in, in other ways. Um, and there's, you know, a lot of examples of that in the original Roseanne, but, um, but I, th I think they've carried that out, you know, through to this show as well. And look, it's not the first show to combine drama and comedy, obviously, you know, all of the family did that, MASH did that and stuff, but these are not shows I watched growing up. Um, I still have only maybe seen a couple episodes of All in the Family, um, MASH a, a little more so, but, um, but so for me, this was kind of the template of, okay, this is how you can effectively marry both of these genres. Um, and I'd seen it done, you know, a little bit in movies and stuff, but in a, in a half hour ongoing sitcom, no, I had not. Um, you know, and again, the, the occasional episode, you know, Fonzie goes blind in Happy Days for the, for the episode or whatever, but there was no comedy in that. It was just like, let's do a straight drama play basically about Fonzie. Um, so yeah, so this, this was the start for me. So this, this for me, I think is probably the best episode of the season. It's so great to see Estelle Parsons. Um, I don't know how her health is. She's, you know, in her, at this point, almost mid nineties. I think she's 92 or 93. Um, so I don't know what, what her desire is to continue, uh, you know, doing this character, uh, on any sort of even, you know, per season basis, but I would love to continue seeing her, um, you know, until we lose Estelle Parsons as an actress, which, you know, hopefully won't be for many, many years. Hopefully she hits the 100 club, uh, and all of that. But, um, but in any event, I will give the MVP, 
boy, it's a toughie because you could give it to Estelle Parsons, certainly. Um, but you could also give it to John Goodman, you know, some great, great stuff there. But I think really the, the, the greatest part of this episode was the Estelle Parsons uh, portion. So maybe Laurie Metcalf gets it. This is one of these episodes where it's actually tough to pick an MVP because so many people uh, were given great material and did amazing things with it. I'm going to give it to Laurie Metcalf. Um, you know, I think she's certainly in the episode more than Estelle Parsons. Um, and I and I love that sort of uh, turnaround and the dramatic scene uh, towards the end there, uh, which, of course, ends with a laugh. You know, she tells Mark, well, it turns out, Mark, that milkshake's going to be $300, you know, so we can help help pay for this uh, nurse. Um, so, yeah, I I'm going to give it to her. I think she probably earns more MVPs than most. Her and John Goodman probably get it the most. But, uh, but in any event, I'm going to leave New Pipes and Old Secrets with an A. I think this is uh, the, the best episode of the season we've seen so far. Um, and there's another new one the next two weeks, maybe the next three weeks. Actually, I think there might be. Um, so yeah, we're, we're getting a whole bunch of uh, great new episodes here. So we love that. Hopefully they are great. Um, <laughs> but we will see next week. There's another one uh, called adding insult to injury. So I can't imagine that has to do with uh, Beverly's arm again. Um, some sort of other injury, maybe Dan with the pipes. I don't know, but uh, we'll see. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see everybody next time on Dan Reviews It. Bye.